Hello again, it's Mr. Pete, and this is episode number 61 of my This and That series. I haven't done one in a long, long time, so this is due. I have a lot of things to cover, so stick with me. At the end, I have some fantastic pictures, and lots of them, of a uh, collection of castings and foundry patterns from a teacher up in International Falls, so you simply must see those. There are so many of them. I'm, I'm so envious of his collection. It's, it's really amazing. So I'll talk about that uh, more at the very end of this video. But in a recent video where I showed my collection here of pocket knives, and, and that was Tips 508, you know, I was ashamed of that video. I made it, oh, six months, maybe even a year ago, and I, I almost threw the video away, but I thought, well, I needed something to put on because I've been busy with my shaper series. So I, I went ahead and put that on. Not a lot of views, 12,000 views, but a lot of comments, 600 comments. So I, most of them quite favorable. Some saying, uh, you know, you haven't even started yet, you know, with a collection. That's not a collection. You know, some guys carry that many in their jacket pocket, but uh, others think that any more than one is foolish. So, you know, you live and learn, and uh, I finally found out what this knife was. Uh, they call it a peach knife for sampling melons and fruits and things like that. And uh, uh, a lot of people like stainless steel, and they like the Victor Victorinox. I'm still not a real big fan of them. I think they use the same steel in the blades that they use in the average cafeteria spoon. I mean, no offense. No offense on that. But I'm big carbon steel fan, you know, that will uh, hold it very... Let me know what brand of relatively cheap folding knife, you know, I, I mean a $15 knife that I can buy that is made of carbon steel. And I do like the open owl. I guess that's not in here. That's... Uh, I carry a little buck. In the very recent uh, years, no, years. Three weeks ago, I, I carried an old timer, and I had a battery stuck. Not this one, but in some device I forgot what was it. I pried. I couldn't get the battery out, so I pried it out. I broke the blade off. Now I had been carrying that knife a long time. I wasn't particular sentimental, but you know what I did? Bang! It went in the garbage. I'm not in the process of keeping broken knives and broken tools. I know some of you are going to be mad at me, but. And some of you probably got this many in your drawer that are broke. Throw them out. You know, they're no good. All right, enough on knives. People asked me if I had heard from my girlfriend, Sarah. And I told you I hadn't heard from her in so long. I've been pining for, for Sarah. But within a week, I got a card and a gift from her. Let's take a look at it. Okay, before I talk about Sarah, this is what I'm talking about in terms of David Olson's foundry collection of castings and patterns. And there are, there's about 20 pictures I'm going to show you at the end. He's from International Falls, Minnesota. My dad always called that the coldest spot in the country. And he is a shop teacher at Falls High School in that town. So... Stick with me till the end, because that's when I'm going to post these pictures. And thank you, David, for sending me those pictures. So here's my present from Sarah, and she must have moved to Los Angeles without even telling me. I thought she lived in Colorado, but in, in $9 just to send this to me. And there is a pound of Starbucks honey, because she's my honey, Madagascar vanilla. Thank you ever so much, Sarah. And uh, here she is, holding that coffee, <laughs> and uh, sent me a nice love note, always with her lipstick on. I'm sorry I haven't kept in touch, but I still watch the videos. I hope you like coffee. This flavor is delicious. So, thank you, Sarah. I hope you got a chuckle. David Pigeon, out of the great state of Vermont, they call it the Granite State, sent me last year's catalog, I believe, of McMaster Cowery. He probably spent ten dollars to send it here. It's very hard to get these these big McMaster car catalogs. They don't give them to just anybody. I know it's last year's, but it's far newer than the one I've got. So, 
and I much prefer a paper catalog over looking on the internet, although I sometimes do that too. So thank you, David, for that and uh, thinking about me. And uh, th this is a good company. I don't work for them, but, you know, they got about everything and excellent uh, shipping and service. So glad to get that. Several people asked me if I ever use the sprues and risers as aluminum stock. Yes, all the time. There's one from some time ago. I also made patterns where I would sometimes, this is a split pattern, where I would cast slugs of aluminum of whatever size I might need. At the high school years and years ago, we used to take these little orange juice cans. Remember, remember when orange juice came in a concentrate metal can? And we would fill those half full or whatever necessary and make slugs of aluminum for, for machining different projects such as pulleys. People ask me why I don't cast these little jacks in a vertical position rather than horizontal. A couple of reasons. As they get bigger and bigger, there isn't room in the flask for them. And secondly, I do like a parting line, and I did not want these to be tapered. These, would, these stems here would be tapered if you did it vertically for it to draw out. As a matter of fact, you couldn't do one on each end. And I want these to be perfectly round so they can be held in the chuck while I do the machining. So I got a reason for all of that, but it, it would work pretty well if you wanted to make these hollow to, to do it vertically. But that job is done, and so, all right, let's move on. I got a very nice gift from a man, but he wishes to remain anonymous, so thank you to you, to him. Uh, there is some... Maple syrup, Happy Jack, looks good, in a glass bottle, I like a nice glass bottle. And then, I don't know why he sent me the bag bomb, but this is a product we used to use all the time at the Pony Ranch when I was in 8th grade, and we would put it on saddle sores of the ponies. They, they always seem to have a saddle sore right up near their mane, and we would apply this, and I can use this for my uh, chafed nipples, I guess. But it's meant for the udders of, of cows, I guess. But, you know, they're selling it here for hand and body. Actually, this used to be in the in a farm store. I don't know where he bought this, but this would be good for your hands or your lips or whatever in the winter. So thank you for that. You have heard me rant many times about these dead blow hammers and how they disintegrate. Now this is a compo cast. I don't know how old it is, but it's kind of beat up, but overall it's in good condition. It is not disintegrating. I think that's damage from, you know, from use. Because here's also a compo cast, uh, same brand, and look at how it has disintegrated totally. And normally I throw things like this away. I was just holding it because I went to... Oh, six months ago, I went to the freight store and bought this one made in Pittsburgh, <coughs> Pennsylvania. And now this is only four or five bucks. It wasn't expensive at all. But you can see I haven't used it a whole lot, but it is already coming apart. Pays to buy the best, doesn't it? I received a gift from Stan Dyer down in Springfield. Every state has a Springfield, doesn't it? Anyway, this is so neat. This is a dovetail in two directions. It's a puzzle. A do-nothing puzzle. And I think he was suggesting that I make it, but I see where Click Spring made one. Matter of fact, this possibly is uh, made from Click Spring's design, so I'm not going to make it, but it is a neat conversation piece to have on the desk. Thanks, Stan. Until about two months ago, I had never heard of Rumble. But when I was talking about censorship on YouTube, and I haven't been censored, I guess a lot of people have, but I have not been censored on YouTube, but they said, go over to Rumble. That's the place to be now. So I finally figured it out, and I put two videos on Rumble. It took almost three weeks before they approved them. I still don't understand that. And now each one got about 100 views, you know, after two or three weeks of being released. I don't get it. There's nobody looking at them. 
they earn like nine cents each or something. I'll show you that in a minute here. But have any of you had success with Rumble? I know that uh, Keith Fenner was starting to post over there, but there just doesn't seem to be any action. I, I'm certainly not going to abandon YouTube, you know, where I I have a, a following and a lot of subscribers. But I'll, I'll show you now on the tablet here what I got over on Rumble, but it's, it's actually a joke if you want to think about it. So if you don't know what Rumble is, it's simply a platform on the internet like YouTube for posting videos. And that's the name there. So let's take a look at my content. And there are two videos. This one is a repeat. And uh, the bottom one it was a new one that hasn't been on YouTube yet. But there's, what, 165 views on that? I thought it told how much money it made. Oh, yeah, it earned nine cents. <laughs> there it is. Nine cents. I'm rich. So put it in the comments what you think of Rumble. Is it, is it any good? Or is it growing? I know it's an upstart, and it would be a long time before it could ever get as big as Google's YouTube Enough on that. Theodore Stoutenberg just sent me this picture this morning of a quail radiator cap on a Model A. So thank you for that. He knows I'm kind of interested in those uh, radiator caps hood ornaments. But what I was going to tell you here is that uh, four years ago I put this video on non-destructive autopsy of a compressor tank when I took an old Sears Craftsman tank apart and showed the inside and how rusty it really was. But someone sent me a link to another video. Let me show you that. You simply must, you simply must watch it. Watch this video. You will be shocked and horrified. And that's the actual name of the video up here with the star on the front. It's called Air Compressor Warning. But the damage that occurred in this garage when that thing exploded and nobody was in there or they would have been killed and knocked out the windows, blew the doors and it just went off like a small bomb. So check that out. You will be amazed. And it's scary. Now it makes me wonder about this little green compressor that I bought at a farm store 42 years ago. And I used to paint my micrometer teaching aids with that, but I never drain it. I'm sure there's water in there, but I wonder what the condition is. It's scary when you think about it after looking at that other video. So what do you think? Do you remember when I made a video series several years back of this height gauge? And of course, it is strictly manual. There's a little scale there, but there, you know, it's only semi-accurate, but it would be handy for general layouts. But just a few days ago, Paul Hill sent me this picture of one that he made. And he incorporated, it looks like, uh, a caliper. Probably an inexpensive caliper, so he made a digital height gauge. And I thought that was pretty neat. Nice job, Paul, and thank you for sending it. Someone reminded me the other day to check out Hemingway kits on the internet. They're in England, so shipping would kill you. But it's HemingwayKits.com, and they have various kits and other publications you might find interested, interesting uh, looking at this website. Hemingway Kits. They have some castings as well. Some of you may remember this video from four years ago. It's two parts where I visited the Bushnell, Illinois power plant and looked at the old Fairbanks Morse. And they had some big EMD engines, two of them. And Craig, who is a friend of mine down there that runs the power plant, told me that, and this is a month ago or so, that both of those big EMD, that's electromotive diesel, I guess that's what it stands for, uh, engines broke down and they had a major problem with the two of them. They had to call in specialists from uh, I think St. Louis to work on them. It took several weeks but after they had them back together he sent me or his friend from that firm 
sent me some footage so let's take a look at that footage and these are the big engines I'm talking about this is a picture from my video all right now I'll cut to the other videos and hello out there Craig and there's Craig getting ready to start up the engine they're testing it and thanks to Steve for taking these videos this is just a short clip fired up at will it's gonna be loud isn't it Note the three valves per cylinder, very typical of those General Motors diesels, including the Screaming Jimmies. Is anyone still with me? This has been a long, long video. And now we're coming to the end here where I'm going to put David Olson's pictures of foundry patterns and castings. And he, I don't know where he got all of these castings, maybe eBay or something, I don't know. But many of them are what they call either first cast or last cast. Possibly some are melt, the last melt when a foundry is closing down. So some of them are commemorative. There's some beautiful wooden patterns that he has mounted on the walls and uh, I'm just in love with that kind of, of thing and I'm uh, really surprised that somebody collects this kind of stuff and I'm so glad that he's preserving it and he sent me very high quality pictures so again thank you David and stick with me there's at least 20 pictures here and you can pause your video to study them that's just really really an awesome I think museum quality collection that David has up there in International Falls, Minnesota, and he is a shop teacher. And we all love shop teachers, and you're going to see some of his professional library there too. The books are in the background. It reminds me very much of the books that I had at the high school, and some of which I still have here at home after all these years. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Now, watch these pictures now, don't you? got about four minutes left of this video. So long.